In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the color grade of the most watched Netflix series. I'm talking about Squid Game. Since the day it dropped, people are going nuts on all my social media platforms. They want me to do a look from this show. So before I create a look on this show, let me deep dive, break down the entire grade for this series, take you guys through it, and let you in on a secret that you might not know and you will find out once you watch this video. It is jam-packed with information. It is one of those videos where you just grab a cup of coffee and a notepad, sit back and relax, hit play, and just enjoy the show. And we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades and some of my personal LUTs. So do not miss out on that opportunity. Click the link below to sign up for the free training. And if you love me, then take a pause, smash that like, subscribe to the channel. There's about 67% of you that are not subscribed so hit the bell icon so you could be notified when we drop new content. Follow me on Instagram. We're dropping value bombs there every single day. Let's roll the intro. All right, so let's get this party started. I got my scopes right up here um, because we're not gonna be using the node area as much. We're going to be manipulating some shots just to give you a different perspective, but we don't need tons of space here. Now, one disclaimer that I want to make is sometimes when trailers come out, they are done way before the final series or movie that airs. Okay, so there might be some adjustments that were made later down the road that you might not see in the trailers. And Joker was the perfect example of that. When you see the trailer compared to the stills from the movie, there were some shots that were different. Now that doesn't mean the entire grade is gonna be different. So we don't know what's happening here because this trailer is the latest trailer. So it might be pulled straight from what was aired on Netflix, but it might not be. So I just wanna throw that disclaimer out there. So in the trailer, this is our first shot, and these lights are mimicking basically the sodium vapor light that you will see on the street. But one thing that you will notice is, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go under gallery and pull up a still from Joker. And you can see the difference between the sodium vapor that we see in Joker compared to in this show. And that's the beauty of color grading, right? Like. There's so many different interpretation of like how we even perceive certain colors because we want to help tell a better story. So here, this sickly green or yellow that they got going on is helping much more to tell this narrative compared to Joker's Ottawak craziness, like all hell is breaking loose thing that we got going on here. Okay, so that is very important to keep in mind. But one thing that I do want to show you is that we go from this shot to that shot to the next shot, which is much warmer than what we see here. It's almost as if we have to go here and go under our curves, take our yellow and swing it until we cool it off a little bit. And now when I go back and forth between the two, it is a much better match than what we see in the actual trailer. And this is not to kind of pick out mistakes in what's happening here, which is a masterpiece, but more so to tell you that you don't have to pixel peep. You don't want to spend too much time shot matching to the point where it's like pixel perfect, you're going frame by frame. That's what amateurs do. Pros grade in broad strokes and then just move on, okay? And um, just to kind of still touch base on the comparison between Joker versus what we see here. Now, if we were to turn these sodium vapor lights into what we see in Joker, again, we're gonna go under hue versus hue and I will start cranking that until we have this tons of orange and warmth going on here, which is very close to what we see here compared to what we had, okay? Again, just a different perspective. And uh, moving on, another thing that I wanna 
share with you, which is very interesting. The vignetting in all these sequences, especially when we're inside and we're on the island, the vignetting is crazy. It's really, really pushed. You see like an oval here, feathered out, inverted, and then they brought down the midtones quite a bit. And um, moving on. And we see that vignetting everywhere. And one way to spot vignetting is looking at your scopes. And when they taper off on the around the edges, that's how you know that there's tons of vignetting going on. Okay. This is a great example of what dark should look like. Okay. Look at the scopes. There's barely any information. I promise you, if you submit this to your client, they're going to go, we can't see anything. Can you bring this up? And then you go in and you bring up like, say, two stops. Right now, I'm using my HDR palette. And HDR palette, uh, if set properly, behaves just like stops on your camera. So we just brought up, like you see the exposure, it says two stops. So we just brought it up two stops. And you can tell the difference here, right? Like we brought it up so much to where it was before. And most people will say, this is better because I can see more detail here. But that is not pure dark. Dark would be this. So this is the beauty of color grading. And when we see cinematic stuff and we like it so much is because they're taking these liberties. That also helps push the emotion, right? Like when we were watching this sequence, it was just kind of scary because we can barely make out what's going on. And it wouldn't have been the same if it was this. Okay? So something to keep in mind. Again, see? Like how you just see nothing. It's just pure abyss. And all we see are just some lights on the ship. Very clean. I like that. Again, just watch out the vignette, right? How heavy it is. Now, another thing that I want to mention is that this entire series is graded, as I already mentioned, more like a Rec. 709, but also more on the commercial side than, say, a grade you would see in a movie. And I'll give you an example. So let's go to favorite movies and let's pull up this shot from Blade Runner. And look at this is their overhead lights. And you can see how much information is preserved and how everything is just kind of living in the middle. And there's still so much detail in the blacks and the whites and all that information is there compared to when we come out here and we see the top lights are just like flat, right? They're just boom, gone. And it has more of a commercial grade, if you will, compared to like what you would see on a movie. Nothing wrong with it, but just pointing that out. And when people talk about like, can you please do a squid game look? What makes this show so interesting and the color so interesting is the set design and art direction. So just notice what's going on. They didn't add that in post. The color of the walls is that, right? The uniform is that color, pink. And then that is contrasted with that teal right here, right? That all the participants are wearing. So they created a lot of that on set with set design, with wardrobe. And then when we see it, we just go, hey, I want to see the Squid Game look. But otherwise, it's just a very commercial looking grade, very pushed hitting the top and the bottom on the scopes and uh, everything pops, good amount of saturation. We can see it right here. So something to keep in mind. I'm going to go in here so we can like really point what we're pulling up. Okay, this is another interesting one, right? So just look at this, what's happening here. It, when we were watching the show, this looked like a really clean white. But now when you look at it and break it down, looking at the scopes, there's so much blue that it's clipping up top, then the green, then the red. So what I would do to make it pure white is this. I would first of all go ahead and completely kill my Luma mix. And that's all. I'll show you why I'm doing that. So let's not kill it first. Let's just take our offsets, our printer lights, and bring them up. I'm going to take my blue and bring it down. And uh, this is aligned, right? Like if I look at it here, if I do before and after, see like how it's aligned. But now the bottom is like all out of whack. Now, the reason why I want to turn off Luma Mix is if I don't turn it off and if I take the my lift and I bring my red down, look what happens. 
it adjusts these colors to compensate for it, right? Now I'm gonna see like how the green is moving up. So I'm gonna reset that. And now I'm gonna bring my Luma all the way down to zero, my Luma mix. Now, if I take my red and bring it down, look what happens. It does not adjust anything else. It only affects the red channel. So we see the red did get pulled down a little bit. So I'm gonna go back in my red offset and I'm gonna keep raising it until we're back to where we were right here. And now I'm gonna go under my red lift again and I'm gonna pull it down. And uh, if I do before and after, like, look at that. That is pure white, okay? So this is what a white should be, very close to pure white. And we can even see it right here. There's so much teal going on up there to like pure white, okay? But that's not something that they went with. They went with this. Again, interesting choice. You can't necessarily say, well, it really helped, you know, with you know, the psychological aspect of it when I was watching it, it's it's none of that. It's just, that's what they wanted to create because if they're really going for that sickly feel or dark feel, then they should make it dark and they should make it green or yellow, but they're not doing that. They're just, you know, that's the look that they chose to go with, all right? This is cool, this is cool. All that is good. Like, once again, I really like the use of dark moments in this show where they just went with it. Like, look at the scopes. Barely any information. I really like it. I absolutely think that this is the right choice here. No distractions, only one focus right in the middle. This is great. All right, I'm just going to go through this. This is a really interesting choice and uh, the one that I support and love, which is to, you know, just load this area with the color of greed which is gold right so like they just littered it with it and you can even see it on the scope i mean we're living in one quadrant and it's right here this the color of gold so that's kind of cool that's very cool this is absolutely my favorite scene especially when it comes to color grading because i feel like everything is done right like every color everything here belongs like highlights to shadows to proper vignetting to just the uniforms, like everything just pops right. I absolutely love it. So there you have it, guys. And the moral of this story is that everybody that reached out to me and thought the color grading on the show was insane, the real unsung hero here is the art direction, the set design, the costume design that really tip it over the edge and take it to the next level. So hopefully there was a lot of positive takeaways from what you just saw. If this does interest you and you want to see more episodes in this series, drop a comment below. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for shows or movies, whatever have you. Do not forget to watch the free training. The link is down below. Click on it. Watch it. And on that note, guys, just remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed, and I will see you guys in the next video.